In other videos, we've looked at creating root object value and attribute validators, all of which are generally narrowly focused on a particular class or type. In this video, we're going to look at creating and using a scene validator. These can be used to check that a scene itself and the objects in the scene are set up correctly and not missing any required components or objects. This could be particularly useful in a project where each level is its own scene. In that case, you might need to make sure that the necessary managers are present or that each scene has a camera and a player controller. Creating a scene validator works just like any other validator. You can right click in the project window, select Odin validator, create rule or create validator, and then scene validator. For this video, we'll make the validator a rule and show how the extra flexibility of a rule can be used to customize the validation of your project. When the window pops up, we'll choose a save location and give the validator a good name. Before we get into the validation, we might want to narrow down which scenes will get validated. A good way to do that is by overriding can validate and checking if the scene name follows a naming convention. We can do this by using the scene reference, getting the scene asset, and then checking if the name contains level. If the name doesn't contain level, we can return false, preventing us from scanning the wrong scenes and getting less than useful results in the validator. Likewise, you could also check the path of the scene to ensure that we're only scanning scenes in a given folder. With some filtering of the scenes done, we can now start working on the validation. Let's imagine that each of our scenes requires a camera object. Well, we can easily check for a type of component with find component in scene of type. If no object is returned, we can display an error message with result.addError and adding a message as a string, just like with any other validator. We may also want to ensure that our player object has a particular name and particular component. To do this, we can define a static string with the path and name that our object should have. Then we can use get game object at path to check if the object exists in the scene. Going one step further, we can use get component at path to check if our player object has a character controller. Lastly, we can take advantage of the fact that we created a rule and add some ability to configure the rule from the validator window. For example, we might want to require that our scene has several root objects with particular names. To do this, we can create a public list of strings and we'll set the values in the list when we're back in Unity. Then in our validate function, we can use a for each loop to iterate through this list. For each name in the list, we can try to find the object at the given path using get game object at path. We can then check if the object is null or if our scene root object contains the game object. If not, we can display an error that can help the level designer create the desired scene structure. Saving our work and heading back to Unity, we can now configure our new rule. Navigating to the Rules tab in the Validator window, we can click on the gear icon next to our rule. Here, we should find a list of strings where we can specify the names of our required brute objects. When we're done, we can press Save Changes. But before we scan our scene, we may need to ensure that our level scenes are getting scanned. There are a few ways we could do this. We could add each scene individually, add all of our level scenes to the build options, but the easiest might be to add an entire folder containing our level scenes to our options. However you do it, make sure the options are checked and then we can press the button for global scan to check all of our selected scenes. Once we have our results, we can easily switch scenes by double clicking on the result and from there fix each issue as needed. It really is that easy and as we continue to work on the project, we'll have this validator making sure that each new level scene is set up correctly. Before we finished, we wanted to point out some best practices or at least to help folks avoid some common issues. It can be tempting to use common Unity functions in a scene validator, such as find all objects of type, which could potentially return results from scenes that aren't intended to be validated. So it's best practice to make use of the several built-in functions provided by the scene validator. These include the functions get scene roots, get game object at path, and find component in scene of type that we used in this video as well as a few others that can be found in the Odin Validator documentation, and we'll put a link to that in the description down below.
Additionally, it can be tempting to use a scene validator to validate several objects in a scene. For example, you might want to check that all the spawn points are on a nav mesh. In this case, the use of a root object validator would be a better solution. In general, a scene validator can be used to validate the structure of a scene or check for required components, and less so to validate the configuration of each piece of the structure or each component. We hope that was interesting and better yet, useful for you and your project.